Hello my soccer universe! Yay! Quarterfinal for Milan! Never expected that. Honestly, uh, at the beginning of the season for me it was all make it to the round of 16. When they played Spurs, I thought, nah, not gonna happen. Definitely not gonna happen. Um, I think they will hang in. That they beat Spurs, yeah, I know the narrative in the Anglo-centric world is how bad Spurs are at the moment. Which I would uh, partly subscribe to, but I actually have, have to say this also down to Milan playing two relatively solid games. I don't want to say great games, but I think yesterday uh, evening, if they would have some finishing, they could have sh uh, shot Spurs out of their own stadium. That's the way I feel about it. And we'll talk a little bit more when we talk about the game, which, yeah, I think uh, it is fair to say that this was one of the round of 16 matchups where I'm fairly certain that the winner did not will not uh, proceed much further than the quarterfinals. I still think that the quarterfinals is the highest that Milan can reach. Maybe with a good draw, a semifinal is in there. I just don't see it, honestly. Uh, but you know, we'll talk about potential opponents as well. But you know, needless to say, I'm happy. I think Milan played rather well, very sturdy, very solid. Again, finishing let them down or, you know, it has been a problem of theirs for quite a while. However, I think the biggest stories, of course, Bayern ousting PSG. PSG project is, again, major question marks behind it. Uh, we had then on Tuesday Benfica um, playing some scintillating stuff against Club Rouge. Yes. That's the caveat. But the way Benfica look, if Milan would have to play Benfica, I would favor Benfica every day. They they can really play great. You have to limit them. And this is a team that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with PSG. Yes, PSG just got eliminated as well. But you actually see that uh, this is not a bad team. And then we had a, a tie between Chelsea and Dortmund where I definitely got to say the Dortmund did not deserve to move on because Chelsea in both legs created more chances for the better team. However, it's the circumstances that, especially in the German speaks, speaking for everyone says, yeah, um, while it was deserved for Chelsea, it was also a little bit lucky because the way that the penalty comment will talk about that, um, I can see their point. Let's put it that way. And I think we have to look again a little bit into the rule book because it's kind of a if what happened there will continue, I think this is something that's going to be exploited, for sure. I would say we'll start in Lisbon. Uh, I said it already. I mean, Club Rouge was never up for the challenge and Benfica just took them apart, uh, scoring some really great goals. I mean, uh, Rafa Silva's uh, first goal and even uh, Gonzalo Ramos, both the, the, the first two goals were just wonderful team goals. Super, and then the finishes, you know, with um, the outside of the, of the foot. That, that was just really great stuff in there. Gonzalo Ramos uh, doubles it up after the half. Uh, Joao Mario penalty uh, is in there. And David Neres also gets on the score sheet. But, you know, at least Club Rouge get a goal. And this was also a beauty. So uh, that was actually, while the Chelsea Dortmund game was definitely the one that um, held more tension. I think if you were just in for, 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 for the goals, and I mean, this game alone uh, raised the average goal tally uh, significantly because the rest were not that goal field. Uh, just for the pure fun of it, it was absolutely necessary to have that game on Tuesday because the, the Dortmund-Chelsea game... Yeah, it was so-and-so. I mean, um, it was not a bad game. Dortmund-Chelsea, uh, Chelsea created chances and it was always the finishing that let them down. I mean, it started right early. Many was then, I think, eventually given offside. But there was very early on where Raheem Sterling has a clear pass through on goal. Goalie comes out and he's hesitating. Not take the take, 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 shot. They completely squawk, squawk on their chance but taking uh, three touches too many. And it continued. I said it in the short video. I mean, there were ridiculous chances in that they hit the post, I think, through Harvard. Um, Koulibaly, uh, instead of putting it into the net, makes a goal line clearance uh, from shot. Dortmund were really hanging back. 
yes, they had, I think, one chance through a free kick and there, but uh, I was actually really uh, surprised how tame Dortmund looked. This was already in Dortmund, Chelsea were that much better, but this was a Dortmund team, remember, that hadn't dropped any points of so They had 11 wins to start the year. They couldn't make it 12. Uh, it definitely was also a factor that Julian Brandt had to come off after five minutes. He was their best player so far and uh, Giovanni Arena is not stepping into that role quite yet. Um, and the injuries, that is probably the one mitigating factor for Dortmund because he already lost uh, the Yemi. Uh, so you have a lot of depth uh, in the attack uh, gone. And then with Julian Brandt, who, he really played very, very well. Uh, so, so, so far, he was uh, probably uh, Dortmund's most dangerous player. So you lose a lot of punch up front. However, uh, for a while, it really seemed they might get away with it because Chelsea were just incapable of converting their chances. Until a ball that comes to Sterling, he actually make uh, uh, mishits it, but keeps kind of possession, stumbles across it, and then just yanks it in in the 43rd minute and levels the tie. And at that point, yeah, okay. This may actually now propel Chelsea finally over the question can 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 score two and then we get to the penalty where uh, uh, a cross car comes in and hits Marius Wolf on the arm who wants to turn away and you know has the arm dangling. Uh, I think by the rule this is a penalty. Uh, the way the arm is outstretched and, and so on. Uh, I think that from a human point of view, uh, the referee actually evaluated the scene correctly the first time around. But I understand, yeah, Lord, it is the same. It is a penalty. Um, I would not like it to be a penalty, this. Because it's, for me, it was not an unnatural position of, of, of the arm. If you're moving around, I think we really need to get away from these hand penalties. I think a hand penalty is, you know, if you go above your head and stuff like that, that to me is more of a penalty, uh, a hand penalty, than if you just get shot at from a short distance with your arm in kind of still a natural position. I think there's way too much micromanagement. I have other way the rules are, this is a penalty. And I guess uh, it's convenient for the authorities that this is a penalty because it means more goals will be scored. Harvard steps up and, the, and uh, hits the post once more and the ball is cleared off. Uh, Dortmund's player says the celebrating and then the call comes in uh, that the penalty needs to be retaken because of encroachment. And now I don't now know the exact rules, but what I saw is that there was a Chelsea player running in first. And the Dortmund players follow him. Of course they do follow him. Because if they don't and there ends up a rebound, he's the one who touches it. And then it's the question, yeah, of course they should call encroachment. But you know, at this moment, you don't care about it because the players are not looking if the shot was taken or not that much. They actually look at their op 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 opponent and you see it so often. If one steps over, the, the rest follows. Then uh, it seemingly called back for encroaching because one of those encroaching players cleared the ball uh, from what I heard yesterday, but I'm not 100% on that, is um, that you can only call, only call it back if that player then uh, denies a goal-scoring opportunity. He clears the ball that would have fallen to a Dortmund player any, any, anyway. Um, again, by the letter of the law, the correct call. There's no doubt about that. However, I find the implications of that rather troublesome because uh, from now on, if you shoot a penalty, you just need to run on as an attacking team. That should not go. That should not count, honestly, uh, because then the others fall. And then, and then if, 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 if you miss again an encroachment call, I had a really good suggestion yesterday. Uh, I heard it yesterday. So they said, Maybe we should treat it like a free throw in basketball that you get one shot for the penalty, like a, pe pe a penalty shoot, 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 shoot. Either it's a goal, okay? And if it's uh, not a goal, then you continue with the, uh, the goal kick. Um, and that's that. And there's no one on the field anywhere close. Not sure how we can do that, but um, in that way you get rid of uh, those goals. But you know, 
I don't want to take away because you know there was there were then very little chances for Dortmund. Yes, I think there were the big equalizing chance fell to uh, Bellingham, but overall Chelsea created more chances. They were the better team. They deserved to move on, and I was actually disappointed how little Dortmund and even Marius Wolf very late on had a really good chance and got it blocked away. So there you go. Let's move on to Wednesday. Let's start at the game that everyone is talking about: Bayern Munich against PSG. And to be honest, while I think PSG maybe tried a, a little bit at the beginning of, of, of the game, for the vast majority of the game they were outplayed and manhandled by Bayern. And of course, um, the two stars are not working for the team and that this is the ongoing problem. And while I could probably understand why Messi, give, give his age, is not running like a madman anymore, I don't understand why Mbappé is hanging around and wait, uh, and wanting others to work for him. We already saw it at, uh, at the World Cup. And to me, he's a young player. Uh, you you cannot be only be there for the glory. You need to also work. Yes, it's great if you have others work for you. But uh, in order to make this work, it doesn't mean that you're less... I mean, everyone knows that he's the best player on that team, even with Messi. And so I really feel that he actually needs to step up there if he wants his, this team to be successful. Uh, as I said, they had they created some early trouble, but overall Bayern played this really well. They had with Upamecano, um, they had the speed to handle. Stanisic actually played it quite, 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 quite well. They Licht did actually quite good uh, with uh, handling the defense. And uh, I was thinking about, I mean, this is Jan Sommer against Don, Don, Donnarumma. Don, Don, Donnarumma is this uh, highly lauded goalkeeper that, yes, he won a Euros for Italy, but Jan Sommer has actually done way more for, Swi for Switzerland. And at this moment, if I had to choose between those two keepers, yes, maybe the age is with Donnarumma, but at this very moment, I would take Jan Sommer uh, every day, any day. It's, it, it's not even close to me. Um, at this at this very moment, yes, Jan Sommer coughed it up, and the ball came then to Vitinha. And how he doesn't bury it, I don't know. But it shows that uh, at that moment, when it did not go in, it was clear that Bayern is gonna win that one because PSG is not gonna find another chance like that. And Bayern actually found the next gear. And as soon as the second half started, it was it was only two goals it could have been many more i mean chupa moting had a goals uh, uh call, call, um, called off for offside yes maybe there was a foul in the build up on verati but i think it was all, 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 all right and then goretzka has the vision to pull it into chupa moting who scores against his former club uh Serge Gnabry adds then a goal but there were so many chances before that uh, the, old, the solitary PSG chance where I think they had a real shot is after corner corner kick when Sergio Ramos uh, had it in and it still boggles my mind it was a messy corner that Sergio Ramos heads onto the goal and then a great save by Sommer um, that was Barcelona captain to Real Madrid captain which should not be allowed um, I think a major rethink needs to happen at PSG um, that's all I can say. Bayern, though, um, turn it on when they need to at this moment. And I think uh, I have a feeling that they are not great in the Bundesliga because they know they don't. They know they don't need to be. They can probably win it, but just you know, uh, win against Dortmund. That will be the game that counts. And then don't embarrass yourselves. I think Bayern are very much in for this Champions League and probably have to be. I, I don't want to say don't want to, uh, but it seems like that they should be considered the favorites at this moment. I think they have something about them. Um, I also think they have a super deep bench. Uh, the players that came in, like uh, Gnabry, Emane, Joao Cancelo, Leroy Sané, have a market value of well over 200 million euros, where it was PSG, the super rich club could put out just 65 million euros on um, reserve players. And yes, there were mitigating factors again for PSG with, in with injuries. But this injury excuse becomes tiresome. Gotta say that. And we have it every year that around this stage, PSG suffers injuries. Everyone suffers in in injuries, but it is all about squad building. And I think PSG clearly shows, yes, the headlines, everything is with them. 
But it clearly shows in order to be successful on the field, I think the age of the superstar is over. You need to have the it's the it's definitely the age of the team. And by an RA team. As much as they are also headline generating in Germany, Bayern are most definitely a team, which PSG are not. And that leaves us with uh, a rainy evening in London. Chelsea's game was 10 minutes delay because I think a Dortmund bus got stuck in traffic. In Spurs, Milan, same thing happened this time for both teams. And it kind of made sense because, you know, as I said, this is probably uh, from a full football footballing point of view, one of the least interesting ties. And then uh, them being too late kind of, you know, fits with the whole thing. I said it before, I think Milan largely controlled that game in the first half. They kept it tight and they had the initiative, especially at the, at the beginning. And uh, especially the one freak, freak kick that where they don't take the shot, but they play out the ball over Tonali to Messias, who then mishits it. That should have already, or already been a 1-0. Uh, uh, Spurs only fine slowly into the game, but uh, Milan kept tight at the back. And whenever Mike Magnon needed to be there, he, he was there. I think there was the a cane shot that he expertly saved. Um, and other way, they didn't let anything happen. And that whole feeling continued for most of the time, I have to say. Whenever I watched that game, when, you know, I, they, are switch, they are switching back and forth. Whenever they went away, I went nervous. But whenever I, I watched it, I found Milan very well in control. Uh, sometimes maybe losing a ball too, too quickly, but overall, um, having the ball, playing confident, and when the others had, had the ball, pressing immediately high. I thought it was a good performance by Milan. Not what I would like from Milan, but defensively this was super, super, super solid. Um, it also helped that both Spurs defenders very quickly got yellow cards, deservedly so. I even want to say that the one for Langley, the way where he um, wrestles um, Leao away on midfield, knowing the speed of Leao. This was could actually be interpreted as denying a clear goal scoring opportunity. This could have been more than a yellow card. So, you know, just saying. Um, this time also, I found the uh, uh, substitution. I mean, he only took uh, Messias of Brasale makers on, which um, in the, you know, in the meat of the game, where I felt this actually might help with speed. You had with Brian Diaz and Rafael Leao, two players who can hold up the ball which you didn't have in Florence. So this also helped a whole lot. And yeah, Spurs had very little chances. Um, there was a penalty call that I think could have been given, but I thought it was probably just all right. But you know, I don't want to judge too much because I have red and black glasses on. But this was uh, kind of, kind of uh, after the 88th minute when Theo Nandes, I think brings down Kulusevsky or something like that. Um, that could have been a penalty. But other than that, there were so many chances for, for Milan Giroud has to score, Brian Diaz has to score. Um, and I think Leao, if he takes a shot, there were so many shots that got blocked. Tonali had a shot blocked. Um, I really felt the finishing let Milan, Milan down. And then uh, in stoppage time, I don't know where the six minutes are coming from. By the way, at that point, uh, Cristian Romero had been sent off for a really rough challenge on um, Theo Hernandez. The scene of the game is there was a free kick. Hain takes the header where Mignon is already in the wrong uh, corner. He saves it and running back, he plays it out immediately. Mina launch a counter attack before a ball comes to Origi, who puts it on the post. It just exemplified that game that Milan were defensively sound but offensively a little bit crap. In the end, they see it through. For the first time since 2012, they are in the Champions League quarterfinal. Uh, as I said, where they, I would consider them rank outsiders. Uh, but you know, we gotta see. We have here have the current standing for favorites, which is kind of an incomplete one because we have four teams already qualified and four teams still need to qualify. However, when I look at Manchester City, they are very much likely to go through. Uh, same thing goes for Inter, Napoli. Um, in a way and of course Real Madrid. I think the one that I feel is not done yet is Inter against uh, Porto. 
uh, I don't see any anything else. But I think we get the the top eight here. That's actually a pretty good picture of how things are standing. I'm a little bit bit, bit surprised that Milan are actually in a fifth place here. Uh, but hey, for now I take it. It looks good <laughs> on paper. But uh, the way it looks, we may have three Italian teams. We may get um, two. We will have two English teams. We'll have a German team, and we have at least a Portuguese team. Potentially two Portuguese and two Italian teams. So uh, will be interesting going forward. Uh, and only one solitary Spanish team in the Real Madrid. So there's also kind of a change there and shows that uh, La Liga is having, in a way, an off season. We have on the upcoming week, we have uh, four ties. We have to say, it, while I am not very um, enjoying the Tuesday ties uh, because I don't care about either of these teams, those are the ones that are still open and there could be interesting stuff happening. Um, the Wednesday ties are maybe the more interesting for me uh, in terms of the teams. However, both of them look very much decided already. I don't see Liverpool overcoming anything. And I haven't meant mentioned Frankfurt fans are not allowed to travel to Naples, which I think is also a little bit of an outrage. Although I really would like to see Napoli move on, of course. Any case, that was it for me from the Champions League this week. Please let, let me know what you thought about the games. Uh, the, did your team advance or got it ousted? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.